In this presentation, we will be looking at the file API. This video is an extract from the 12 lesson Moodle plugin development by example course. A link to the course page is in the description. In lesson five, we developed a, course, a banner course format. So we needed uh, the file API to allow us to manage the banners that, were, uh, dis that are displayed in the course as you can see on the screen now. But before we start, if this video proves to be useful and informative, please don't forget to like it. So the file API. Moodle 2 2.0 introduced a new file system uh, for Moodle. And the API is specifically for internal files really. Uh, and uh, Related to this API, as I mentioned before, are the repository plugins functionality, uh, which adds the 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 the, the uh, functionality to deal with files outside of the um, file API or the uh, outside Moodle's internal system. Okay, and uh, the the uh, internal files are stored in a combination of physical files on the disk and a database table record. And there's a kind of thinking behind that in that um, with file systems, you are always beholden to the underlying um, the underlying operating system uh, in use. And that can prove problematic when you've got restrict different restrictions on file names, file sizes, file name lengths, etc., etc. And in this way, uh, what happens is the... Um, the actual file contents are stored in a nondescript kind of file um, on the disk and the actual details about what the file is are stored in the database table. So uh, many of the file APIs functions are defined in the file lib.php file in the lib directory and additional functionality to do with files is defined in the file storage class. Now that's the low level file activities. So this is actually opening the files, getting the file content, etc. So that's that falls under the, the, the scope of file storage. Okay. And then there's a, a concept of a file browser, which allows um, for browsing file areas in code the same way you would browse through uh, directories etc um, on the on the on the uh, on the hard disk or on the on the uh, storage uh, on your file storage so the usual process when working with files is you create a draft area for the user if they are existing files you copy those into the draft area uh, once the user commits to saving the file, submits the form, etc., you copy the, the files that are in the draft area. So whatever they've changed ends up in the draft area. And then you copy what's in the draft area back into your files, your plugins file area. And then the final bit of it is when a user attempts to access the file, uh, part of the, um, of the um, uh, process is actually the the plugin or the component uh, delivering the file using the file API, but making sure that the file is well, if, uh, identifying the file, making sure the user has access to that file, and then allowing the file API, the file uh, core file API to send the contents back to the browser. So Plugin files are stored in the plugins file area. I've said this a couple of times. Uh, very similar to directories, but not quite the same. So a file area is defined by a context ID, the context in which the file is being saved. Uh, you noticed in our code, we put it in, a, uh, in the context ID was the course ID, I context, uh, the courses context, because we are saving that file in the context of that particular course. The plugin's Franken style name, which defines the area itself, the name of the area. A file area type, this is for a plugin to determine. So we use banner uh, for ours, but uh, you could use whatever you want. So you could have a file type area for images and another one for non-images. But most 
plugins that only just really define one type. And then a unique item ID. And again, this is something the plugin itself determines. Now that might be the record ID of a related record in another table, but otherwise in most cases you just use the uh, e, uh, zero. In our case, we use the item ID to of the of the section uh, in the course. Okay, to 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 um, to allow the user to actually uh, um, request the file, um, you need to create a link that will be displayed somewhere. Uh, for them to click on and to create a link to these files that are stored internally you need to use a function uh, a, a Moodle URL function uh, make plugin file URL and you've, you've we've come across that Moodle underscore URL class before uh, in, a, in our previous lesson okay so and these are the parameters that uh, need to be passed to that function or that method the context id which is uh, which we've determined could be the in our case is the course id the component which is us the plugin the, the what's this the uh, uh, frankenstein name the area where the file was saved the item id if we've given it one uh, otherwise zero and then things that again are defined by the plugin itself, a path name, a file name, and force download. So those, those, those parameters are for you to be able to, to, to identify which file we are talking about. The force download obviously is something uh, that is, we haven't spoken about before, and that's basically telling the file API that you want the file to be downloaded and not opened in the browser or automatically opened. Um, and then the resultant link looks something like this. Uh, your, your Moodle URL, your Moodle site's URL, plugin file.php, and then all those bits of data that, uh, that we, well, not all of them, uh, because you've got a context ID component and file area and then you've got this arbitrary extra information um, in between before you get to the file name and its extension. Actually, uh, the the plugin file PHP is not the only way uh, Moodle delivers files. There are other ones uh, relating to different kinds of ways of delivering the files. You've got file PHP, draft file, user file as well as our plugin file.php files okay so the plugin file.php will eventually call a function in your plugins libphp file uh, and the function would need to have the name your plugin name that's your frankenstein name and then underscore plugin file that would be the name of that function and this is what would be called um eventually by the uh by the uh, plugin file.php call okay the link that comes uh that's been created so in essence if you if you're dealing with files uh your plugin must uh define that function to be able to allow a user to access the file right the callback itself, so that that uh, Frankenstein name underscore uh, plugin file uh, method or, pro or function uh, will get these following par parameter parameters. All right, course. If it if if they if we are talking about a course, that will be null if it's not applicable. The course module will be null again if not applicable, and then you get your context, um, and it could be the system context, the file area. The args is a amalgamation of certain of the data that we've passed through when we made the URL, and it will have the item ID and the path, um, and the, the path that we've defined. And it's up to the function to to work out what it does with these. Then we get the force download field, a uh, 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 force download flag, uh, whether to this should be forced the, the user should be forced to download and then some certain options additional options um, um, 
affecting the file serving. So again, this is what the function decides what to do with these. Usually it's not even defined. So, and then the function needs to return false if the file is not found. Otherwise, you use the file API send underscore stored underscore file uh, function to d actually deliver the physical file, for send the file data. And some of the uh, functionality, some of the parameters, such as the force download, needs to be passed to that function. So the, 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 the your process will be in that function in your plugin file uh, function is you check whether the context is relevant. If you're dealing with course and course modules, obviously you do something with that. But basically, in most cases, you check if the con context is relevant. You check for the file area. Is it a valid file area? Check if the user is logged in or has the right capabilities to be able to access that file and then identify the file using your item ID, your file path, file name uh, from the uh, forward slash separated args parameter that we spoke about that came in uh, that comes into the function. And then you attempt to retrieve the uh, file from the file store. And once you've identified the files file, you then um, ask the um, APIs send stored file function to send the file or if you don't find it you return false to the uh, to the core so uh, for this for this for the purposes of this lesson i'm going to just define it outside of the class so i've added in the function outside of the class so that's the end of the class there um, and we've got format banner topics plugin file okay and then there's our uh, our parameters that we spoke about in the presentation coming through here. So we look for the item ID, which is the first uh, item in the args array. Um, and then we get the, uh, the uh, file name uh, of the bottom of the uh, args array because it's the last um, item in that array. Um, and uh, we then try and work out the uh, path of it. So work out the elements of the of the uh, part, file path. This is fairly standard functionality. You'll see this in just about every plugin file function uh, across the board. Okay, and then we do, we go back to getting our file storage and getting our file. So we go in, we get our file based on our context ID. Our format banner topics is our um, component name, the file area, uh, which would be a banners uh, item ID, which in this case would be the section ID, um, the file path, which would be just uh, a slash, and then the file name. So if we get the file, if we find the file, uh, if we don't find the file, we return false. If not, we send the file, send stored file, the file that we've just identified up there, uh, we give it a lifetime of about a day um, and if force upload came through there it will go the same value goes through and the same options uh, goes through to the same to that sta same stored file function and that will allow the file to be delivered so uh, I'll make sure that's saved and let's have a look at it in Moodle so that's it for the presentation. To watch other extracts for, from the course, click on the playlist link, or alternatively, watch the video describing the course content. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and thanks for watching.